dass nicht jede Frau eine perfekte geborene Mutter ist und Zuneigung zu ihrem Kind entwickeln kann, ist ein Gedanke, den die Filmemacherin Nathalie Terlink so faszinierend fand, dass sie ihm einen gesamten Film widmete. Hier wird eine Frau, die einen sehr eigenen Zugang zu Intimität hat, mit ihrem Sohn konfrontiert, den sie einmal zu Recht und aus guten Gründen verlassen hatte. Hier ist Past Imperfect. Alice spielt Rollen. Jeden Abend eine andere. Als Escort-Dame kann sie jede sein. Sie ist die Projektionsfläche der Fantasie ihrer Kunden. Das ist ihre Welt. Doch als sie vom Tod ihres Ex-Freundes erfährt, geraten ihre fest eingespielten Strukturen ins Wanken. Denn der Rolle der Mutter für ihren Sohn ist sie nicht gewachsen. Aus dem gleichen Grund hatte sie ihn Jahre zuvor bei ihrem Ex-Freund gelassen und war verschwunden. Jetzt muss ich die Einzelkämpferin eingestehen, dass sie nicht länger vor der Vergangenheit davonlaufen kann. Sie schwankt zwischen Zuneigung und Ablehnung und droht in dem Strudel aus Gefühlen unterzugehen. Die selbstgewählte Einsamkeit, an der sie selbst nicht viel zu ändern vermag, scheint mit der Nähe ihres Sohnes und einem neu dazugezogenen Nachbar aufzubrechen, Risse zu bekommen. Aber am Ende liegt es ganz allein an Alice, diese Nähe zuzulassen. Und dafür muss Alice erst noch verstehen, dass sie diese Nähe und Zuneigung braucht. Natalie, uh, what interested you in telling this particular story as your first feature-length film? Well, I always start like, uh, like with sort of themes that keep on fascinating me for a long time and that I explored in my shorts or in my uh, theater pieces. Mm -hmm. And what interests me is, is the, the way how, how very close family dynamics work and how we tend to um, fill gaps that are left or, 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 or fill them up or remain empty and stuff and how it all Circulates. how it all circulates and, and um, at that point as a filmmaker for me it's important to question things that seem kind of obvious in society or, or in terms of role models or, or uh, patterns of behavior and one of those things is motherhood and the, the very obvious idea or the very common idea that it's something that should be there and should go naturally and should be felt and, and there is no question about the unconditionally loving your kid and then it started to interest me like okay but what if you are emotionally not capable of giving that love or feeling that love at a certain point in your life and what how can I explore such a character? So, if you have this, this theme of motherhood, and on the other side you have her working as a sex yeah. worker, yeah. so uh, if you bring all of that together, it's there's another motif of intimacy or intimacies, yeah, right. very different kinds of yeah. intimacies. Can you tell me about the, how they kind of work together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it's not it's not only about the, the complexity of, of, of motherhood. What what what's going on in Alice is a sort of a, a fear of um, of adapting any role, any sort of role in her life or, or, or having any sort of intimacy or having it close to her. So for me it was interesting to see like I talked with a lot of uh, escort girls and how they kind of 
tend to enjoy the feeling of, uh, of, of a sort of power, of a sort of role play, where they're in control of something that is in fact uncontrollable, like intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I, it kind of reminded me of why people look at horror movies to, to play with a sort of feeling that scares you, but at the same time have a, have a sort of safe distance yes, towards it. And I kind of, it, for me it felt, it kind of felt together, like for Alice it's, it's a sort of safe way to explore a feeling that she's not capable of in her real life. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I mean, the other motives of, of, of probably money and, and a sort of uh, uh, emotionally detached life. And sure. But how do you how do you navigate this very thin line mm -hmm. of talking about this with those very strong motives of sex work and motherhood without falling into like the whole cliche trap know, of sex yeah. work and motherhood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does how how does that work? How did you manage that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 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 something that I think it's it's maybe because it's something that ended up afterwards in in the movie more as a sort of a, a, a metaphor for a way of life than. Uh, than the idea of really putting those things next to each other. So, and also to try to look, to give a point of view of the, of the sex work as a very sort of almost banal and normality mm. away from the exotic romanticism that we like to see in the movies and we're a sort of very in control, very um, normal kind of thing with a lot of potential for banality and, and, and spraying deodorant to kind of remove smell or yeah. that I think that's something that was kind of important. Mm. So here's my last question for you. You're a female filmmaker made a very female centric film about very female topics like motherhood uh, in an industry that very frequently says that none of that is really important because it's just a female view. What do you think about that and how is your film going? Does it find its audience? Actually, yeah, it, it's been uh, it's been a nice surprise because uh, it, it's it's going really well in Belgium uh, and it's going really well for the male public as well, and that was very oh. nice <laughs> because uh, it's I had a lot of, of people coming afterwards, uh, the, or a lot of fathers as well, who, who just recognize a sort of fear for parenthood, and yeah. and I think we tend to forget that it's like a sort of they're also vulnerable at, at the moment because their their fixed roles are also like everything is like being flu and being being a bit mm -hmm. unclear at the and same time and much more complicated and thing. much more complicated yeah. yeah so we used to have these extreme ideas of this is how you have to be as a woman or as a man and that's what the the movie talks about of course but I think it's also the same for a man in our society. Well, thank you very much for this wonderful interview, Natalie, and good luck thank with you. your film. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>